Fathers Who Bother is made possible in part by the contributions of listeners like you. To support Fathers Who Bother, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash fathers who bother and become a monthly subscriber today. On the next episode of Fathers Who Bother, I speak with the stars of the new kung fu comedy, The Paper Tigers, Alan Wee and Michael Shannon Jenkins, about their real life roles as dads, the importance of mentorship, when to administer tough love, and more. What? No more challenges. Kung Fu without honor. It's just fighting. Three tigers, baby. Go, oh, oh, my oh, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. How that taste, old man? Dad. Yeah, buddy. Do you know any Kung Fu? I'm retired. Who's the old guy? That was our teacher. We called him Sifu. You didn't hear. Sifu's dead. Something's not right. There was no heart attack. Do you think the poison fingers is real? Yup, Gao Sao. Can I just say it in English? Can't just say it in English, just in English man. When the hands cross, all will be revealed. <laughs> Did you hit me? No, it's just a glance. Just a glance, man. You fine. got this. You got this. It's fine. <laughs> okay, look. Sifu could have set anyone off. Whoa. Time catches up to some people. Like you, the great three tigers. We all swore together that we would defend the weak. Out there is a very, very bad man. Where can we find this guy? Okay, go, 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 go. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Hold on, hold on. What are you doing at three points? Just you it, you it. Three tigers back again. Does everything have to be a fight with you? We might be a disgrace. But Sifu had only three disciples. I swear to be loyal to my brothers. To the very day I die. If you guys looking for a, uh, you know, fourth uh, tiger, I take karate. <laughs> Let me know. Welcome to Fathers Who Bother, a podcast for men who are dad as we want to be. My next guest is a native of Biloxi, Mississippi, and has been making his mark in Hollywood since 2003. An actor, writer, and producer, he's landed leads in many highly regarded television shows, such as TV One's Miss Me This Christmas, A Royal Christmas Ball, Michael Jackson, Searching for Neverland, and more. His film credits include The Last Heist, The Mass Saint, and The Paper Tigers in theaters and on digital May 7th. <laughs> Although he is busy filling many roles, today we are going to talk about his favorite role as father and husband. Please welcome Michael Shannon Jenkins to the podcast. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. How about yourself? Super good, actually. Good. You see, you're looking all fit. And, oh, man, and... listen. I, I'm trying to be here forever, bro. At, for for people forever. who can't see this, the gun show is on <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thanks. Welcome to the gun show. Um, <laughs> so I was reading up on you a little bit. It said your father was um, in the United States Air Force, correct? Yes. Yes. So what was that like being raised by a military man? Uh, it was exactly how you imagine. Uh, very disciplined. Um, very, you know, we got up at 430 in the morning. Most kids, don't, you know, you know, on school days, like he was, um, he was about getting things done. He was mm -hmm. about um the capability within yourself he was about i remember i was having trouble with the calculus problem once and he flipped to the back of the book uh, i said could you help me with that and he said sure he flipped to the because my dad actually was a certified genius as well like his iq was off charts he flipped over the book and um he said you see that and i'm looking at him like it's a it's a credit page he said right now you tell me which one of those guys has one thing you don't have and I was like, uh, they don't have it. He said, good, so I'll flip the book over and figure it out. That was wow. Funny. How old were you? About 17. 17. 
and he just said it's like learning to swim just took you out in the middle of the ocean and just let you go actually, he actually did that and I did that. <laughs> And I did not learn how to swim. My cousin jumped in the water and saved my life. And, what? and he he never admitted that was probably not the smartest thing to do. <laughs> but, he got on a boat and was like, you'll get back. Wow. Like, this ain't Navy SEALs, bro. <laughs> Luckily, my cousin was like, he, he got 30 seconds for me to see his head or I'm going in. And there was no head coming up. Like, I'm dense. So I was going to the bottom. Wow. Wow. So did you eventually learn how to swim? No. All I did was propel the fear of water. No, I'm scared of water. I wow. can tread it. Okay. I, but I just talked to my, a friend of mine, went down to the YMCA at my age and got that swimming in. Right. So I might, I might just, you know, I'm grown now. He's dense too. So he's like, I used to sink too. He can swim. So. I'm a little je- uh, my son is a dolphin, and so is my daughter, because I saw to it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get the baddest swim teachers in the world at, like, two and have these dudes, like, where well, they cannot drive. So, like, you know, my fears become their strength, but I'm going I'm to handle that. I don't, like, I, don't like, I don't like being afraid of anything, but it did not work. It did not work, oh, man. and it did not in- inspire me to then get it. It inspired me to leave it alone. Wow. So speaking of um, two kids, you have two? I do. Okay. So tell me, t- bring me to the time you first found out you were going to be a father. Uh, it's just, I've always wanted to be a father. Like, um, you know, I was playing basketball uh, with my crew. Mm-hmm. And my wife, yeah, well, we got married. And I said, um, after our honeymoon, I said, there's a baby in there. You can't put all that work in and then not be a baby. And she laughed. Uh, <laughs> four weeks later, she's pregnant. I said, I told you. I told you, baby. <laughs> and so my son is a true honeymoon baby. And when she told me that, I just felt like, um, like uh, I could live forever because, like, that's, that's how you live through the people you touch and impact. Mm-hmm. And I knew for a fact all the things my dad did not do because of mm-hmm. his because of service or whatever, I was gonna get it right. Like because I, I paid it very close attention to how I felt about certain things he could not do. Like my dad had a very high standard for me when I, I played all sports and mm-hmm. he want, but he never never coached me. Mm-hmm. It was like you come to the games and want me to be this like Megatron, but you never taught me anything. Like you let these other coaches dictate what I learned and then had a standing on me. So for me, my standard for my son was Megatron, but I was in the dirt, like teaching. Like if you do it in practice, now I can have the expectation of you doing it in the game. So I put a lot of energy into like arming my son with practice and consistency and discipline and how it really pays off instead of like un- these unnecessary standards that you had nothing to do with building and then like i mean that's doomed for failure like if you you think you can expect something from someone and you haven't invested in that person you're going to be gravely disappointed Mm. Mm. so i actually took a lot i mean there were a lot of things my father did that i really really look back on and go like without it my life would be empty then there were those things that like i made a point to learn from and now that my son is like, it's a, and my daughter's it's the greatest feeling in the world. It's the only role in the world you can never get, you can never be fired from. So you might as well live it out fully. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I make all the big choices in their lives because what you gonna do? Be somebody else's daughter? You know, so <laughs> How is I go it? big, bro. I go big. How is it um, raising the boy versus the girl? Are you, do you keep kind of the same? mentality for both of you no you my daughter my, yeah. my daughter has me in the palm of her hands it's not right it's unfair mine yeah, too <laughs> it's like they got that crypto night i told her i said listen don't look at the way i'm treating her and be mad i can't look at her face like what am i gonna do with that you i'll just take her outside and we can figure it out my daughter 
and she understands it. Like she knows which voice to use at which time oh. to give me what. Oh, it's, 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 it's a, she, I've seen her look behind me and study me. Like she's smart. I can tell my wife, watch, watch her. Watch what she has with me. <laughs> she wait. She sees whether or not the lion is in predatorial stage or he's in main stage. She just come up behind me. Daddy, and I'm done. She's like, yes, whatever it is, it's yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what, is, what do they make of dad's career? Uh, they, they love, they love, I'm happy. You see what I'm saying? So they want me to do what, what makes me happy because I'm not happy. This whole house is not happy because, you know, I'm a big energy. Mm-hmm. So when I'm not happy, nobody's happy. So they're happy with my, they're happy that I'm doing what I love. And she finally gets a chance to see a movie that uh, she really, really likes. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? I'm doing a lot of adult stuff. So like, she's i remember when they sent us the final kind of premiere of it so i could see it before we spoke on it right she she wasn't gonna watch it she walked walked around the corner at the beginning she said i'm just gonna sit for a second and i said it's gonna get you it's gonna get you man by the time she already did the credits rolling i said i told you it's gonna get you she's like i really like that so I'm, i'm feeling really uh, accomplished at this moment. First one, you and my daughter actually sit down and be like, yeah, I'm feeling that at 100%. So I'm, I'm really excited about it because I think it's the kind of movie that can touch all audiences, all age ranges, all groups. And I don't think I've ever been a part of something that solid. And what about your son? I, what does your son think? Uh, my son thinks it's the code is, you know, he, he, you know, my son acts because I act. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. and he, he was on Broadway with Denzel doing Raising in the Sun. Like, he's had some very accomplished work. He was an easy, like, and the only coach he's ever had is me. So, like, whenever um, something big happens, uh, it's a big win for both of us, you know? And um, so and he can't get enough of it. Like, he doesn't like the fact that I take that beating. I take a lot of beatings in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Normally, I don't lose. Normally, I'm winning. You understand? Right. Under Speedy 3, I was winning. Right, um, right. But uh, not winning. Uh, I'm winning in here, but I'm not really winning up. So he he loves it because he's never really seen me take an L in life neither. Like that. You see right. me take some learning lessons from from so-called L's, but he ain't never seen nobody put, put daddy on his back like that. Never. <laughs> he just loved it. <laughs> he just loved to see that, uh, you know, I'm human. Um, so it's good. It's cool. Because I never really realized how much that was important to my son. Like, I spent a lot of time uh, putting on a cape and just pretending to be bulletproof. Mm. I never realized that, like, sometimes they like to see you take a few hours because I guess they're taking them. Mm-hmm. And they're measuring themselves up to you. So it's just one thing I would, I would do a little different if I had his some of his some of some of those other years back it would be for him to really understand that we all t- we all take learning situations learning situations are there so you can be ready when you're when you're when you're surfacing it's got thick skin so, you, so nobody can't move you off the block like you got to take those learning situations and learn or there's no chance of ever really winning nice. so I saw that in his eyes and I was like, no, maybe I should just start telling him about some of these L's. I've been keeping it from him because I didn't want him to think that he wasn't happy. So now, you know, that's one of the things I try and do when we talk. I'm like, y'all remember when, I remember when I this cost it. I was the reason we didn't win this one. And this is what I did about it. You know what I mean? I, I learned from it. There are no L's. It's winning and learning. Winning and learning. What'd you learn? If you learn something from it, then get it. Get it and go. That's, That's so cool. important. I, I mean, you, you're giving me something to think about because, you know, I've never thought about sharing with, you know, my children things that I got wrong or things that I lost yeah. or times that yeah. I lost. You know, they only right. see the, the certificate. Oh, here's my degree. <laughs> or daddy finished college. Oh, yeah, That's daddy right. did this. But you never say, well, you know, I didn't get, you know, That's X, right. Y, and Z, you know. Right. We're so busy trying to protect them and provide, you know what I mean, that we forget that they're, that they're studying us and you know, measuring themselves based on how well we've done. 
Mm. And if all they see is like all the stuff we've done well, it's tough. It's tough to measure up to that. Yeah. So I pulled out all this, all the roles I lost, all the opportunities I messed up being greedy. Mm. And uh, when I really, when I really realized that you got to chase what you're passionate about. People say this all the time, like, if you chase your passion, you don't have to worry about money. Right. It is the truth. Like, I know it sounds crazy. You like to knit. You have a medical, you have a degree, you have a JD, but you like to knit. Don't do law. You're going to need a glass of wine every night before you go to bed. <laughs> knit, trust me, knit. You're there are people lawyer. who are doing exceptionally well knitting garments. It could be you. It's tough though when you, you know, when you measure, when people can be measure winning by things instead of by smiles. And that, that's the problem is that people just want to do things that they think are safe, that they think guaranteed them some sort of financial. None of it's guaranteed, bro. None of it. Everybody that. wants to be a doctor, you want to be a nurse? How about this pandemic? Sound like a good idea now? You're in the front line. Right. They see you first. Mm hmm. Better be your passion. You're yes. calling. Yes. You're, you're calling. <laughs> in. You're not. You're not meeting that head on. That's right. not in the job right. description. You're calling in, bro. Right. And that's, it's your passion. So, like, yo, do what you're passionate about. So, your son's acting. What about your daughter? Is she showing? I want no part of it. No. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm happy because uh, I don't really want her in this world. Really? Why? It's just. I can't protect her in it. Like, mm. I just can't protect her in it. So, yeah. I, 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 no, no bubble is really safe, but um, this one's really because it's so wide open and you have to be available to everybody and you have to build trusting relationships with people you don't know. Mm. And uh, women have just been taken advantage of in this industry for so long. Mm. Um, it's difficult to, for me to believe that we've rooted out all the Weinsteins. You know what I mean? And so, like, I don't want my daughter in no room with these guys, with her hopes and dreams in their head. Men aren't men aren't always the best of people when they have that kind of authority. So, like, I've given her violins and I'm giving her pianos. We got six guitars in there. It's like, girl. Um, follow your artistic thing because it's in you. But uh, I don't want anywhere near this business. I would never tell that because she probably didn't do it. I love the fact that she's like, I just don't, I don't even, I don't even want to. <laughs> Not so gonna get anything out of the kid. I'm like, right. whatever you want to do, baby, I'm with you. Right. So in Paper Tigers, your character, Jim, he isn't a parent, but he's a mentor. Um, yes. how, how important is mentorship when it comes to raising children? Mentorship is parenting. Mm -hmm. If you look up the word parent in the dictionary, it says to guide. Mm -hmm. We throw all the rest of that stuff in. Like parents' jobs, yeah, when your child goes astray, it's, it's on you. Like you, you were supposed to guide that. Somehow you got preoccupied with providing and doing stuff that you forgot that the guiding of it, the guidance, parental guidance, that's what a mentor is. Someone that helps you guide your, your way through, the, through the, the maze. And so mentorship, um, I think that's, I think my, my son sees me more as a mentor than he does a father. He doesn't even really know that there are differences. The only difference is I gave, I participated in the wonderful activity of gave him life. But from that point on, I, I mentored him. Like that is my job. It's like to make sure uh, he don't make his own mistakes because that's what he wants to do. Right. But it won't be because I didn't say, uh, I, this lesson doesn't have to be learned. The hard way. You you don't have to make this mistake. My son is playing around with stocks now, and investing his money in a lot of stock. And I I need to think about that to like well out of college. And I was like, this boy, he's all talking about passive income. I'm all like, yeah. See, I just sit back and yeah, just like you take a little responsibility when they go astray, you get to take a little bit of responsibility when they go all right. You know what I mean? So yes. I'm like, go ahead, talk that talk, bro. Talk yes. that talk, brother. Yes. I'm gonna sit back here and let you talk that talking back here. Take 10 and go ahead and put me in, in a couple of things too. Let's see what you do. Like, 
I, I want to support that because I love that he stepped out. Him and his friend are like, they all Bitcoin in and I'm like, roll with it, brother. Me, I'm writing movies. I'm trying to make movies. I'm trying to make my own movies. So you go ahead, Bitcoin. I'm going to go make these movies. You, you figure out a way to make us some funding and just make movies. That's what's up. So, so I, yeah, I'm, I think mentorship is, um, I think that's what has really gotten away from us. The Boys Club was so real in my life. Like, mm. and, and there aren't any. Like, you can't find them. Right. Big Brothers was surreal in my, when I was in college as an alpha. That's what we did, Big Brothers. Where are they? Like, these fraternities used to step in all the time. And that was part of the deal. You, you, you could do more with 100 than you could do with one. Now, somehow we've gotten away from that. And you want to know why people aren't, like, my son is, didn't pledge anything. We don't talk about it. And I'm a, and I'm a legacy. Right? My dad was an alpha. I'm an alpha. What's but, up, Frat? How are you? What? Yes, sir. What's up, boy? <laughs> I was going to say, so you're a friend of Dr. Callis? I did not realize oh, that. you got to go get it. Yeah, oh, okay, bro. Yeah, bro. Where, where, okay. where, where, where did you get made? I got made at Loyola University. Okay. And Roe Epsilon. And um, my dad pinned me before he left this wonderful planet. Oh. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about him. He said, you go ahead and pledge if you want to. This is how he want, this is how he made me do things. You go ahead and pledge if you want to, but mm -hmm. you gotta have a GPA to pledge. You know I'm smart. You know, come on, bro. You know I'm smart. Right? You you gotta have a GPA to pledge this return. Well, okay. He said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not paying for your fees either. I'm like, not a problem. He's but I knew my father had put a scholarship in play for the highest GPA online. Mm. It paid the fees. So when he pinned me, I was like, oh yeah, and I wanted to thank you. He's like, what I said, for paying my fees. And he laughed. Cause, cause, cause homie, he knew like upset me. That, that's what you do. That challenges me. Upset me dog. Okay, okay, okay. So you think somebody on this line is gonna be smarter? Gonna have a high GPA than me? Yeah, okay, we are gonna see. That didn't happen. No, bro, no, like I just locked in real hard. And that's what he, that was his way, like, of challenging me is like, yeah, the opportunity is here. Can you go get it? The opportunity is here. Can you go get it? And the beauty of that is that's what taught me that I can write my own script. That's what taught me that I can shoot my own movies. That's what taught me that I can invest my own money in myself because I hated all that. You, you, you know, you, you, what's different between you and him? Nothing. Then you do it. But guess what? Now I walk into every situation. I'm like, well, what's different between him and me? Nothing then I'll do it. I'm waiting for the script to come through. They can't write no roles for black men that I like, I'll write it. They can't shoot a movie with a, with a black man in a, in a role that I'm excited about, I'll do it. I mean, it's it's nothing I'm, I'm afraid of in, except water. And there's nothing I can't do because of that mentality. And, and so like when people talk about Tiger Woods' father, I'm like, yeah, but when do you stop blaming his father for Tiger Woods' behavior? Like, his father guided that shit. It's when his father left that the guidance was astray. Like he wasn't doing any of that stuff when daddy was away. Cause daddy had him locked in. This is who he was. Look how the job his dad did do. Like this is who he was and this is where daddy, this is where his daddy armed him to get. Now, how people look at it, like when people take snippets of people's lives and they try to tell you how certain people are. I just laugh because if they took some of the snippets out of my life, they think my dad should go to jail. I was like, but in the world we were living in, at the time we were living in, in the South, like he was scared. Mm. He was scared for me because the bubble was busting everywhere. You know what I mean? So like he put in me enough fear so I stayed disciplined. And that kept me out of jail. That kept me out of situations with dudes who I like to hang with. It got into stuff because I had to get home. I, they used to say it all the time, like, your daddy gonna put work on you, bro. We gotta drop you off. And then they go do some mayhem. You know what I mean? It's be like, they can't smoke around me because my parents will smell my clothes. Right. And you know, they say, if you smell like he was doing it. So like, they would not even put me in that predicament because they knew my parents didn't play. And I, I appreciate it. Cause now, you know, now I don't have any of those issues. And a lot of my very close friends got mad issues. 
So they're giving me the wrap up sign, but we're going to talk again later tonight with your movie LBs. <laughs> later Love on. It. I we're can't wait, bro. Again. But this yes, is sir. Been so dope. And I can't wait to continue um, later on. But I know you have other interviews to do. Um, good to meet Looking you. Looking forward brother. to it, brother. Looking forward to it. We'll talk. We'll, we'll speak again later tonight. I cannot wait, brother. All right. Oh, six. Oh, six. Ah! <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Sometimes you're in the right place all the time. I love it. Hi. Oh, oh, oh Jerry. Whoa. Oh, what's up, Jerry? What's up? What's up, Jerry? How are you doing? How you doing, Frat? It's we're oh, back. You we're already back. know, bro. You already know. You already know, oh, bro. Good to meet you, Elaine. We had a, a, a nice morning chat earlier today. Um, this is Fathers Who Bother. I'm the host, Jerry L. Barrow. So Elaine. I wanted to start with you quickly as the dad in the movie. Um, what did you draw from in your personal life to to influence uh, inform this character? Man, just being a father. Period. Uh, I mean, I have a five, I have a six year old son, and at the time he was four. Uh, I drew everything from my personal experience um, and 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 understanding what that is. In addition to that, drawing, you know, being a son uh, and and. You know, right now my, my father is retired and I've, I've been spending a lot of time with him basically every day, just getting to know the man as a man and understanding some of the things that he had to de deal with in the past that I never got to, to know. Um, he sort of shielded us from a lot of the, the struggles he, he was going through in terms of being an immigrant here. Mm. And I, you know, and all of those things really gave me a bigger perspective, a, a, a wider net to cast, to, to pull from, um, to understand some of the things that generationally we go through. And it speaks a lot to the foundation of the film, right? So Sifu, although he's not a biological father, he is the father of these three kids, the, 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 the three disciples. And understanding the teachings that he was trying to impart on us and not being ready to accept those uh, teachings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't get it until you get older and you start to realize the, the, you, to gain that perspective that you have uh, as you get older and to learn those lessons th thoroughly and fully. Um, so, yeah, to go back to your question, I drew from a lot from my personal life as being a father and a son. Yeah, Michael shared some interesting tough love stories. So when he was younger, his father putting him through his paces with calculus and um, teaching him how to swim and, and the paper tigers themselves kind of administer some tough love in the movie to some some young men that they're trying to set on the right path. Do you have an example from your life when, you know, you either had to administer some tough love to your son or were the recipient of some, you know, tough love or discipline? Yeah, I mean, what my, my dad, what my dad taught me was work, right? Um, that nothing is ever going to be given to you at all. Uh, you know, and, and it, it, it rang true to me as I got older. Um, and and that it's not even just my father, it was my mom, too, who really taught me um, that failing is okay. Um, she would always say this to us. She would always say to me, my, my three older brothers and my younger sister, she would always say, go out there and fail. Hmm. And I thought that to be very interesting. It wasn't a lesson that I, I really didn't understand until I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, but what came out of that was the realization that uh, you start to understand by trying and by failing, you don't really break anything. You don't break any bones. You don't break any. And the only thing that really gets broken is maybe bruises your ego. And I remember going to her, you know, after like the millionth audition and I failed and, and I haven't gotten bookings. She, I, it, it dawned on me what she was saying that I, I remember asking her like, so when you were told, when you were telling us to fail, did you mean just to try? And she's like, yeah, because if you're just sitting there and not experiencing failure, then you're not trying at all. That the purpose was to let you guys know not to be fearful of failure but just to try. And so those are the things I'm trying to teach my son now, which is like, hey, just go out there. It doesn't matter if you don't get that ollie or you don't understand how to hit a bat or you don't understand coloring between the lines. Go experiment because it's okay to fail. It's totally okay to fail. At some point you'll get it and you'll understand. So those are the things I'm, I've, I've learned and I'm trying to impart into other things. 
as far as tough love goes, I mean, that's the toughest I get. I mean, it, it's <laughs> it's more it's more philosophical than anything. Um, but yeah, that that's 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 the teaching that, that I'm trying to impart. Mike Ellen, I touched on that a little bit earlier. It reminded me of a of a poem where it said, "The man who wins in faith defied because he isn't afraid to fail." And mm. we were talking about um, being able to share with our kids our 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 failures, you know, the things mm. that we got wrong. Um, right. And, you know, so Michael, pivoting back to you, why do you think parents would want to watch Paper Tigers with their kids? Well, I, I think parents are too hard on themselves. Mm. And they don't realize that they have a lifetime to make up for things. And watching the Paper Tigers, you'll see the father who's kind of lost his way, um, trying to find his way in all of the situations that come with like a separation and yet never truly giving up and how if you just keep plugging away at it like parenthood is, is just difficult like scary the responsibility is bigger than you like it's just all overwhelming but if you just keep plugging away at it you you're going to get another moment You'll get another opportunity. And if you can just deliver the goods then, you know what I mean? If you could just get that one good thing out, it could turn that whole thing around. And and um, I think the parents need to hear that right now because I, I think that um, a lot of parents just walk out. They just throw their hands up, especially fathers. And what they don't realize is once you've once you've given life to a source, that source is part of you, whether you're beside it or not. And the further you get away from that source, the weaker you are. It doesn't matter what you accomplish. Once so, you've given life to a source, I love that. <laughs> so I'm I'm excited. I think that uh, it, there's redemption and there's Ooh. glory in every phase of your life. Let go of the 20s. There's good stuff in your 30s. Mm -hmm. Let go. There's good stuff in the 40s. But you, you know, you might need a little reminder once or twice. So find yourself some people who believe in you. The one thing about me, I never stopped believing in Danny Ahens. He might not have believed in himself, but I, you couldn't tell me. You couldn't tell me he wasn't going to do that work. Them dudes came down like, get him. Even when he was like, I don't want to. Get him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alain, how, what would you add on to that? Like why parents should see this movie? You know, it's it's um it's it's really it's everything that Mikkel said um, is understanding that th there is that you shouldn't give up, um, even though it feels like there's a lot that you could just put your hands up and say, OK, well, this is uh, why, why, why try? Why, why try at this point? Like it, it's it doesn't make any sense. I it's a it's a lost cause. And I think the redemption story is is what's really powerful here is that, that there's heart and it's not just from Danny it's it's from the Hing character and the Jim character and in many ways even Matt's character the the uh, uh, the Carter character in terms of being ha having have some kind of redemption in terms of like okay this is who I am now but let me impart in you guys some of the things I've learned that I've that I've been taught so yeah I, I think it's 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 a broader um, you know reason to watch the the film but really if if you're a father or, or a parent period that's going through this uh, difficult times that that there there are there is going to be a moment that will present itself where you can redeem yourself so i think that's why it's important okay so last question what is the relationship between martial arts and parenting either of you can take that one. Oh man Oof. i think it's discipline mm -hmm. um it all takes time it all, you have to be consistent. You have to have something you stand on. You have, there has to be a technique or a mm. standard. You have to stand on it and, and let things burst from there. And if, you, if the ground, the foundation is strong, footwork is solid, you can, you, can, you can do amazing things. But if the groundwork isn't right, mm. no, matter, no matter how you attempt, no matter what you're trying to do, it's going to be, it's gonna, you're going to fail. So yeah, so, and that's that's gained through discipline, right? Discipline and consistency. Like a child only knows what you teach it. 
And if you're consistent mm-hmm. the way you teach it, the child will grow with that consistency. So uh, I think uh, discipline. I think there's a line in the movie where I think my character says that uh, without Kung Fu without honor is just fighting. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to know that there is purpose, that you have to teach purpose, mm-hmm. that you're just not doing certain things just for the sake of doing it, but you have to also understand the reasons behind it. And I think that that kind of translates to parenting in terms of like, hey, you just don't do this because of this. Let me, let me show you why that is. Let me explain to you why. And then have them go through that experience too so they can get to see what you mean by, by, by what you say. So, yeah. Well, I love those answers. Thank you so much, gentlemen. This has been Fathers Who Bother. For men who are dad as we want to be, go and check out the Paper Tigers in theaters and streaming on May 7th. Bring your son too, bro. <laughs> yes. No bring, son. Bring somebody else's son. And if you ain't got somebody else's son, bring him and have him bring his son. Absolutely. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Jerry, thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you, thank you both. All thank right. You, take Jerry. care. Hey. If you're enjoying Fathers Who Bother, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at Fathers Who Bother and Twitter at Fathers Who Be. Thanks.